That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. All right, and today's the Daily Dose of Stupid. I thought that we would do something kind of special. Um, we are going to do yet another Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez Week in Review because, boy, AOC has had a stellar, stellar week. And so instead of doing so many Daily Doses of Stupid dedicated to her, I thought it was much easier to just do a Week in Review this week. So, But finally, and this is the big one, because this one actually has an Alabama tie-in, which we'll get to in a second. There is a cat fight, and I know that I'm a sexist now for using that term, but there is a cat fight between Nancy Pelosi and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and the whole thing started over a spending bill for emergency aid to the border. Pelosi voted in favor of it. AOC voted against it. Pelosi actually, even though that they had the House had failed several bills aimed at doing this beforehand because they couldn't agree with the Republicans, they finally did figure out a way to pass a bill, and there were enough Democrats that were able to get on board that it wound up passing and sending it to the Senate. And what's important to note about this, this is specifically to give aid to the kids at the border. This is the reason that this was put together, and improve their facilities so that it won't be as problematic, because we had a massive surge that was completely unexpected of unaccompanied minors and also children and adults in these holding facilities. And, and part of the reason that we're having some issues and some problems is because of the overcrowding and specifically surprise overcrowding. As a result, Congress has deemed that it is necessary, and, and something that I actually agree with, this is something that the federal government is charged with doing, specifically in Article 4 of this, the Constitution. So because of that, the Democrats were able to side with the Republicans and say, look, we may not agree with each other much, but we do think that these kids are going to need beds and blankets and supplies, and because of that, we're willing to put our differences aside to put this spending bill together to spend on the illegal immigrant children being held in these facilities. AOC decided against that. But what's fascinating is that now AOC has come out against Nancy Pelosi on this. And the reasoning for AOC's no vote basically is a Monty Python sketch. I mean, it boils down to, hey, are you going to vote for the spending for the kids on the border? No, we must never side with the Republicans. Why, AOC? Why should we never side with the Republicans? Because they are evil and racist and have children in cages. But this bill would actually help remedy that. This bill would actually help the kids so that they could get out of cages so they could have nicer facilities. But we must never side with the Republicans. Why? Because they're e you see how this goes? That it just keeps going in a circle. None of it makes any sense. But this is the stance that AOC has decided to take. We will never side with Republicans no matter what they do. Even if they're doing something that we're specifically complaining about them not doing. And honestly, from a political perspective, I think that AOC might actually be in the right on this one, not saying what she's doing is right. But if you're the Democrats and you're constantly undermining any attempts whatsoever to get new facilities built, all you have to do is point to how bad the facilities are and talk about how cruel and evil Republicans and Donald Trump are. It's a win for you on both sides. And so, I mean, yes, kids are you know, in trouble because of it, and they're having to sleep on the floor under security blankets. But what do you care? I mean, for you, it's all about winning the next election, so why does it matter? But anyway, that's the position that we have, uh, we find ourselves in, and because of this, Nancy Pelosi did an interview with the, Was the New York Times and said, all these people have their public whatever and their Twitter world, but they didn't have any following. They're four people, and that's how many votes they got which is essentially true. When it came to this bill, that was about the way that it went. And she's saying that the, the woke left, the fresh faces like AOC are doing something that makes absolutely no sense to essentially appease their Twitter followers. And, and the truth is, this is nothing new. Nancy Pelosi has been throwing shade sort of subtly at AOC for a long time. You may remember this clip from her earlier. When we won this election, it wasn't in districts like mine or Alexandria's 
however, wonder, I'm, I'm, she's a wonderful member of Congress. I think all of our colleagues will attest. But those are districts that are solidly Democratic. This glass of water would win with a D next to its name <laughs> in those districts. And not to, not to diminish the, the uh, uh, exuberance and the personality and the rest of Alexandria and the other members. Which I mean is basically true. I don't often agree with Nancy Pelosi, but that's correct. In the district that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez won, now, was it a big deal for her to win her primary? It was a moderately big deal. It was a guy that had been in office for a long time. But was winning her district a big... No. You could have literally put Ronald Reagan against a shoe with a D next to its name, and the shoe wins. That's the way that it works up there. In fact, you could even put you go the opposite direction. You could pick somebody that's a very left-leaning Republican, somebody like Mitt Romney, against a glass of water, like Nancy Pelosi said, and they would have won. She is correct in that. But the thing is, Nancy Pelosi has a tendency to kind of try to not throw shade and throw shade at the same time. And I think this comes from her being a grandma, because everybody knows the grandma insults are the worst ones. Like, your grandma looks at you and goes, hey, you look really good since you gained all that weight, and you're just there like, uh, thanks, grandma. You know, it, it's kind of a backwards burn to where it burns you, but it's it's they're trying to phrase it in the form of a compliment. <laughs> and that's what Pelosi did in that clip, and that's, uh, but now that's that's gone. Now she's not even pretending to to try to ingratiate herself to them. Now she's just, the gloves came off and she's like, look, they're, they live in their Twitter world. They listen to those people. They have, and, and that's the amount, the amount of votes that they got. And she's not wrong. Her and, and Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar and whoever the other one was from, I think, Minnesota, that's what happened. And Nancy Pelosi apparently pointing this out was a big problem. So AOC, in response to this, said in the Washington Post, and I quote, When these comments first started, I kind of thought that she was keeping the more progressive flank at more of an arm's distance in order to protect the more moderate members, which I understood. But the persistent singling out, it got to a point where it was just outright disrespectful. The explicit singling out of newly elected women of color. <sighs> So like I said earlier, AOC is a one-trick pony. She knows how to do exactly one thing. When somebody attacks her, she lashes out and she calls them a name. They're either sexist or racist or bigoted or whatever. It's literally the only thing she knows how to do. And because of that, when Nancy Pelosi kind of jabbed her a little bit, she jabbed back with the only thing that she knows how to do. Call her a racist. She can't call her a sexist because she's a woman. Oh, wait, that makes AOC sexist because we just determined from her earlier tweet that saying someone is a woman is sexist. So I don't know what the rules are. AOC's the expert on that. You'll just have to ask her. But that's where we are right now. That The only thing that she could come up with to say against Nancy Pelosi in response to that was, well, I guess that it's because of my race. It's because they're women of color. And that's the reason that she is saying this, which... It's absurd. What's going on here? The real divide, and I do think it's hilarious that she said specifically the, the more progressive um, members, when actually the divide here is between progressivism and socialism. Nancy Pelosi is a progressive. AOC is a socialist. A progressive is a socialist with a longer timer. What a progressive wants to do is turn a country socialist little by little, increment by increment, until all of a sudden you're a socialist country and you can't figure out how you got there. Socialists say, nope, burn it all down, we're starting over. That's the difference. AOC doesn't want to wait. She doesn't want to be patient. She wants to have everything that she wants right now because she's essentially a giant toddler. And Nancy Pelosi is the old guard, the experienced progressive, the experienced Democrat that's saying, we want the same thing, let's get there gradually. And to point this out, Nancy Pelosi, the same woman who just yesterday was literally coaching illegal immigrants on national TV how not to get caught by ICE. 
This is not a woman that hates illegal immigrants. She is encouraging them to break the law. She's not against illegal immigration. She is merely against these facilities not having proper equipment to take care of the kids that are housed there. Which I guess is technically a point in her favor, even though it's not helping much. But I want to point out the irony of all this. Nancy Pelosi's stance is, I'm willing to work with the Republicans if it means that the Latino kids that are coming across the border get a bed and get a blanket and have plenty to eat. AOC is saying, no, not going to work with the Republicans no matter what it's for. So Nancy Pelosi is voting for beds and food for the Latino kids. AOC is saying, doesn't matter what it's for. I'm not voting with the Republicans. And yet AOC is saying Nancy Pelosi, the one voting for the Latino kids' foods and beds, she's the racist and AOC isn't. That's how backwards AOC's mind works. <laughs> but that's where we are now. And Terry Sewell of Alabama, our own Terry Sewell, actually weighed in on this. And remember that she's a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. She said, To even insinuate that I or any other member of the New Dems would promote policies that are racist and, and hateful or ones that would negatively impact communities of color is deeply offensive and couldn't be further from the truth. Now here's the thing. Is Terry Sewell, representative from Selma, is Terry Sewell correct? Yes. Terry Sewell is right to point out the absurdity of her claim. As I explained before, the divide is not over black or white, or in this case, white or Latino. And the divide is not there. The divide is progressive versus socialist. Nancy Pelosi is saying, let's play the political game, let's play the long game and get these policies through later. AOC is saying, nope, go for broke, I want what I want and I want it now. That's where the divide is. Terry Sewell is looking at that and saying, no, that's dumb. And Terry Sewell is right to point that out. However, the reason that it's hard to take from Terry Sewell is that Terry Sewell does this kind of stuff. She has used this exact same tactic before. I mean, you just look down at the history. She joined the Democrat censure denouncing Trump as a racist for saying that Haiti was a, a crappy country. He, he didn't use the word crappy. He used a different one, but I can't say that on the air. Um, was that a bad thing? Sure. But she specifically, in that censure, said, nope, Trump is a racist for saying that, even though there was no evidence of that whatsoever. Uh, she also accused John Merrill, our Secretary of State, of voter suppression, specifically of black people, calling John Merrill a racist when there was zero evidence for it whatsoever, no reason to believe that he was trying to suppress black people from voting. Ironically, considering under his watch, our Department of State has recorded a record-breaking number of African Americans voting in the state of Alabama. So, despite that, Terry Sewell is still saying that he's trying to suppress black voters and accusing his department of racism. Terry Sewell also accused the entire state of racism merely for passing voter ID laws and the strong support that we had for him. Said, said that of our state legislature, our governor, said that that was racist, accused them of racism, in that. And Terry Sewell also said that electing judges, as opposed to having them appointed, was racist in 2016. Honestly, I think there's a good debate to have between elected and appointed judges. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. I think there's legitimate points on both sides. I'm fine with having that discussion. But the idea that Terry Sewell is saying the reason that they're doing this is because of racism, no, that's incredibly stupid. So, is Terry Sewell technically correct in this one issue, saying that AOC is way out of line and ridiculous for suggesting that Nancy Pelosi hates people of color? Yes, she is 100% right for doing that. But the thing is, Terry Sewell has done that before in the past, so it's kind of hard to take that criticism coming from Representative Sewell. Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler.
totally up to you.